Elizabeth loves dancing here, and I'm so excited because I'm going to finish my story about my near-death experience and where I've been and where I've come from or where I'm going. And um, so I called my dad and I told him everything that was going on, and I was rushed into emergency surgery, and she was going to do the uh, appendectomy laparoscopically, but she said as soon as she stuck the camera into the first incision, she said my stomach was so full of pus and bacteria, and she said it was the worst case that she's ever seen, and she doesn't know how I made it to the hospital <laughs> without dying, and she said that grown men have walked into the hospital just writhing in pain, and their appendix hadn't even been ruptured, and she figured that mine probably ruptured when I thought it did on that ranch in Skyhook, and so for two days it was just pumping bacteria and pus and all kinds of nasty stuff into my abdominal cavity. And so she had to cut me open from my belly button down, so it kind of looks like a um, like an old-fashioned C-section scar, which was really strange because in the eight years that I worked in labor and delivery, uh, you know, I was I was in a case like that. I was in a case where we just cut them open and you cut through the skin and you cut through the muscle and then you cut through the fascia and you cut through uh, and then you tear open the stomach and I can only imagine what she saw on there because lots of times, you know, like, uh, I just was there, and with, we broke, cut into the uterus, too, to get the baby out, but um, it was just so strange that I was ended up having kind of the same kind of uh, surgery happen to me, and I was like, I know what they did, I know what tools they used, I know, I kind of know how she sewed me up, and so it was so interesting how that worked, but anyways, I had to stay four days in the hospital because the... Uh, antibiotic they had me on, they could only do IV because it was so strong because she wanted to make sure that she got everything out of, it, you know, everything cleaned up and killed and, you know, I was going to survive and stuff like that. And so uh, it was just really strange going home after that because, um, you know, my husband was gone and I was by myself and I am just really thankful that my family, my dad and my brothers and my sister all kind of stepped up and I had friends step up and help me and bring me food and stuff, but the whole experience, I was just like, I knew that I needed to do this alone, like I needed to use that as a growing experience and a, a chance, like a new chance to do something, to do something big, to start over, and I was like... That even though it was really hard and I was in pain and I would cry, I would just cry and let it all out, you know, but I was like, I was always taught, you know, that no, how, no matter how bad you think it is, somebody is has it worse than you, you know, and that's always kind of like to help me get through it is like just knowing that, you know, it might seem bad and might, I might seem alone or I might seem painful or it might seem, you know, the worst thing that could happen, but I was just like, you know what, there's somebody out there that is in a worse spot than me, and I just need to be thankful for where I am and um, just keep going, and that's when I, my vision kept getting bigger, you know, and I was just like, I can do this, I can do this, you know, even on the times where I just, the time I remember I was like in so much pain and I couldn't reach my, uh, pain medication, and I was just like, why? I was like, why is this happening to me? And I was like, I was, but it didn't last very long because I was like, I know why this is happening, and I just felt calm, you know, and I felt like there was somebody there with me, watching over me and helping me, and I'm just thankful for that. And so um, after I healed up from that, and, um, you know, I just thought it was really strange, and I, I'm not going to hold a grudge, but I was just like, you know, this person, my ex-husband or whatever, I was just like, how can he, you know, not be here for me, you know, but I was just like, no, I'm not going to think that way, I'm not going to hold a grudge, and I'm going to love anyways, and I'm going to just keep going and do what I'm supposed to do, or do what's in my heart, you know, so, um, anyway, I made it through, and after I healed up, and I was able to, like, walk around, and I was like, I don't have a job, I don't, you know, 
I don't know what I'm going to do. And so thankfully, my a good friend of mine was just like, well, you know, he's like, I, you can I have a bartending position, a day job at this hotel, and, um, you know, you can do that until you figure out what you're going to do. And so I was like, thank you. And so I started working there. And, but the whole time I was there, I was still dreaming. I had this gigantic vision of dancing and what can I do to make money and, um, like, I just, I don't, I'm not going to stop until I do this, you know, and then, uh, but I was still kind of stuck, you know, I was doing what I was used to, waiting tables and bartending and stuff like that, but I was really proud of myself because I wasn't drinking or anything like that, so that was good, and then, um, next thing I know, it was like last summer, and I hadn't been to a pool party, like I hadn't been swimming, I hadn't put on a swimsuit, like the whole summer, which is so strange, you know, because summertime, you're going to swim and all the other kind of stuff, so, um, this friend on Facebook said that he was having a pool party, and I was like, for st something was just like telling me to go there. They're like, you need to go to this pool party. I was like, I don't know this person. I was like, what am I? How? What am I gonna do? I don't know this person. And so, but I was like, look, you need to go to this pool party. You need to go to this pool party. And I was like, okay. So I just messaged him on Facebook, and I was just like, yeah, I see that you're having a party. Um, can I come? <laughs> and. Uh, you know, he was just like, yeah, you know, sure, you can come, and so, luckily, I went, and, uh, I just, I met this really special person, and, um, he was in the circus, and, kind of a long story short, the, the, the circus is a whole nother blog about how, the time I had the circus, but long story short, I met this very special person, and we toured with the circus for six weeks, and, um, it just really, inspired me to keep doing what I love because, you know, they are performance people and I got to be around performance and I got to bring on these people with passion and, like, family togetherness and, you know, just, you get through it. Like, you know, there were trials and, you know, some tribulations and stuff like that, but you just get through it and you perform and you entertain people, you inspire people, and uh, the I became good friends with the, the head mother of the circus and we were talking and... She was just like, you know, she's like, if it's in your heart, then then you can do it. And I was just like, thank you. Um, thank you so much for saying that, you know. And so ever since I've been back, I've just been like, okay, here's my vision. I have a gigantic, huge vision of having a dinner dance performance place here in Oklahoma City. And I want to inspire people to dance and family togetherness. And it's big and it's huge. And uh it's exciting, so just keep on the lookout. I don't want to say too much because I know this is already long, but anyway, that's the thing, and that's how it's going. I'm putting that on the universe, and um, I'm excited. So see you soon, or keep watching me. Bye!